Rub up your engines! Peyton Fixit says, what is a better choice for a first-time car, an Acura TL08 or an Infiniti G37? From Connecticut, the Acura by a country mile, as the saying goes. Infinities are perfectly fine to buy brand new. Matter of fact, I just had a customer bring me a Chevy Silverado we bought, and he hates it now. He one time had an Infiniti G37, and he said he loved that thing. He bought it new. He said he loved it until it got to be four years old, and it started falling apart, and it cost a fortune. Then he hated it. The same man had an Acura that he got 380,000 miles out of. So I'll tell you, you're much better off with the Acura, especially as a first-time car. If you can afford that kind of money and you find a good one, go out and get it. Do not get a used Infinity. They are money pits as they age. SO56122 says, Scotty, what do you think about the reliability of the current generation Mazda 6 with the 2.5T engine? Well, you know, I'm not a fan of turbocharged engines, but they're doing it to all the engines now. And at least that's a 2.5 turbo. And the Mazdas are making pretty good engines now, and you're talking about the current generation now. Mazda has a big affiliation with Toyota. Their quality has gone way up. They can be good cars. Now, I'm too cheap to buy new cars. I always buy them when they're a lot older, but those are pretty good vehicles. They're much better than the older Mazdas were that had transmission problems up the wazoo. Xavier Gonzalez, Scotty, what do you think about the Honda Del Sol? Okay, the Honda Del Sol were kind of an in-between car. They were better than the Civic, but they weren't as good as the Accord. They could last forever. I had a customer with one had 350,000. was still running fine. That said, they were still a pretty basic car like the old Civics. You'd feel the bumps on the road. They weren't particularly fast. Now, if you like the body style, people with the Del Sols, they either love that little body style or they thought they were ugly as could be. If you like the body style, it's the car for you. If you want to get an old used one, go right ahead. You can still get parts for it. It's still basically a Honda Civic underneath, and they could last a really long time, especially the ones with standard transmissions. Those things could go half a million miles if you took care of them. HDR Pro says, Scotty, I bought a 2014 Buick LaCrosse. It has a very slight shutter when it crawls forward. Any idea what it is? Well, you know, you want to try the simple things like change the air filter, the fuel filter, the spark plugs, check that. But if it's not that, it's a Buick. It's seven years old. It's probably the transmission having a little bit of shutter when it takes off. The weakest point of that Buick LaCrosse is its automatic transmission. Personally, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, you might change the transmission fluid and filter and leave it at that. If it gets better, great. But if not, a lot of them have a little bit of shutter. I had one yesterday. It was a 1500 GMC truck, and it had a slight shutter on it. It only had 45,000 miles on it. They're just not the greatest quality in the world with those GMs. But hey, as long as they still go down the road, what the heck? Live with it. You're going to have any warranty on that thing. It's seven years old. You don't want to spend 35, 4,500 having a remanufactured one put in. So personally, if the filter and fluid didn't change it, I'd live with it. Ben Robert says, Scotty, my boyfriend wants the turbo. It's 2020 Nissan 370Z. Is this a good idea? Of course, you know, you realize if you turbocharge it, you're going to have no warranty. The warranty is gone. You've modified it too much. But if he wants more speed, go right ahead. It's going to cost a lot of money to do it correctly. But if he's really into speed, go right ahead. After all, it's his money. Those are well-built engines. They can take it. Those rear-wheel drive cars will do donuts and spin around, especially in the rain if you got too much horsepower. Tell him if he's going to do that, he's going to have to Put racing tires on it. And the racing tires sometimes only last five, six hundred miles. Then you got to keep buying new ones. So take that in consideration too. Zach Wyman says, What's so bad about a Chevy Malibu? Why wow, the 2015, it runs like a dream. You didn't see how many miles you have on it. Yeah, they run great when they're new. But I've had so many customers with those Malibus that when they got a hundred something thousand miles, they just started falling apart. The engines, the transmissions. And yeah, they run great when they're new. And you know, yours is what, six years old now, pushing six anyways, depending on what the production date was. But they fall apart when they age. I've had so many people buy the Malibus and the Impalas used. And they'll buy them with like 95 or 110,000 miles. And within a year or two, they just completely fall apart. They are not long life vehicles. They were a long time ago. You go into 70s and 80s, the Impalas and Malibus will really well make it last a long time. Not the new ones. Ben Wall says, what's the best engine for a Toyota Tundra? Well, as far as I'm concerned, the best ones are with the timing chain engines. The V8 ones that have timing timing belts. Those have rubber timing belts, but they have interference engines. So if the rubber timing belt or the water pump that's driven by the, by the rubber timing belt breaks, the pistons hit the valve and destroy the engine. You get one that's got the timing chain V8 engine. Doesn't matter that they're interference engines because they're metal chains. I've never seen one break on a Toyota. They generally last forever. So I'd always want to get the engine that has the timing chain in it, not the timing belt with a Tundra. Now, the early, early ones, you could get a V6 engines, and then they were decent V6 
engines, but they didn't have the horsepower. Most people want the V8 and the Tundra so they can get pulling power. Guy on the street has one with 380,000 miles a couple months ago. Believe it or not, he towed like 18,000 pounds. Now, he wasn't going fast. He was only going 30, but he pulled 18,000 pounds of sheet steel on his trailer, and he made it where he was going. CJ says, Scotty, how do you think about that new Innova scanner you have? I think it's fantastic. I mean, I have Innova scanners that go for $100 to $550. Bucks. And I do have to say, each range is better. Now, the $550 one is for professional mechanics, looks up data systems, does all kinds of things. And for $550, bucks, if you work on cars for a living, it's a killer. The $250 one, it is excellent. I think I got one sitting down here. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. It's a little handheld one, right? That particular one's like $265. Bucks. It is killer for that kind of money. It still does a lot of professional stuff, ABS resetting stuff. And for that kind of money, I got to say, I'm impressed by that company. They put their money into their system. The software is excellent. They upgrade it all the time for free. I got to say, those are good. I, I think they got to deal with AutoZone now that AutoZones are selling the Innova scanners. And I do have to say, it's a step up from their old Actron scan tools. Of course, Actron got bought out by somebody. Then they got bought out by Bosch. One company keeps buying another company. A lot of times, the quality goes down. But the Innova is actually going up as time goes on. I'm rather impressed by their stuff. B14 says, what's the best SUV now to buy? Well, unfortunately, it's such a wide range. You want a little one, a medium one, a big one. Of course, the Toyotas make excellent ones. So do the Hondas make excellent SUVs. What price range are you looking at? What size do you want? Uh, do you want a RAV4? Do you want a Honda CRV? Do you want a bigger one like a Highlander or a Forerunner or a big Acura or a Lexus? It really depends on your price range. Do you want new? Do you want used? You got to look into all that stuff. My main thing thing would be don't even think about buying a GM or a Fiat Chrysler one because they're garbage as they age. But you really got to bend it down to what size do you want? How much money you want to spend? There's a lot of things involved in an SUV and they're so popular these days. You want to make the right choice because even the crappy ones are expensive. Mike T says, should my girlfriend trade in her Chevy Cruze for a Toyota Camry? Well, if she could trade it in even and some fool would do it, definitely do it. The Cruises are like one of the worst cars ever made and the Toyota Camrys are one of the best. Let's say it's a later model cruise. Paid a lot of money for it. She's going to lose her shirt. They just don't have any resale value. Now, maybe you want her to lose her shirt, but that's a different content. Let's just say the Chevy Cruises are not that well made, but if you got one and it's late model and it's not high mileage, you might as well drive it till the wheels fall off because you're going to get nothing for it. I would never buy one in the first place, but if somebody has one, you might as well take care of it and drive it until the wheels fall off unless you find some fool that'll give you money or a trade on it. And in that case, put it up for sale and see what's offered. And if somebody offers it, years ago, I had a customer with an Audi. I wouldn't have given him a thousand bucks for that car. They suckered some old couple to give 9,500 bucks for that used Audi. I was shocked. But they were from Germany. They like German cars. So you never know. You put it to the market, see what the market will bear. If you get good money, get rid of it and then get a good used Camry. James Huff says, Scotty, do you ever use power wrenches to loosen and tighten bolts? Oh yeah, you know, I got electric ones, but my favorite are my air compressor tools because air compressors have so much power. To loosen them, the air compressor are best because when you're taking something apart, you do not care. You're taking it apart. If it's corroded, spray a little WD-40 on it, let it sit for a few hours, and then get the power air wrench, it'll take it right off. Now, when it comes to putting them back together, sometimes it's not a good idea to use a power wrench. You might over torque them. Those are better to get a regular ratchet and socket, tighten them up. You can look up on any of the data systems what the torque is, how tight to make them. Then you get a torque wrench and you set if it's a 65 foot pounds of torque, you turn it till it says 65 and you turn it till it goes click and that's 65. And the only thing you got to realize is the torque wrenches, when you're done using them, you want to reset them back to zero because if you leave it at 65 sitting, that screws them up. But whenever you're done, just put them back to zero. That's the best way to put them back together. Kenyon Comstock says, Scotty, what's your preferred cup of Joe? I heard it was non-synthetic motor oil poured fresh from the nearest Toyota parts center. I don't buy Toyota oil because they don't make their own oil. They get it from somebody else. This is water in here, even though it's in a Moscow Mule cup. A company sent me one Moscow Mule, but the beautiful cup was certainly worth it. It's a real copper one. It's not one of those fake plated. It's actual copper. I just had some Ethiopian coffee that my son got us for my wife's birthday, and it's fantastic. There's a coffee place in Nashville, and he had 
get it sent. It is, gotta say. I like Ethiopian coffee. I gotta say that it's, we just get the beans and then we grind them and make the coffee in an espresso machine. I like it strong, so that's my preferred. I always was into Ethiopian coffee. You know, they say that's the fatherland of coffee is Ethiopia. I guess there were goats running around there. Somebody saw these goats acting crazy and they saw, hey, they're eating these beans from this plant. Let's see what happens if we boil it and drink it. Voila, there comes coffee. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.